Over the years, we've interviewed a lot of amazing guests. This is our first potentate. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in the reading room of the library, the Grand Strand campus of Ori Georgetown Technical College. We're focused on the 34th annual convention and festival for the South Atlantic Shrine Association. And we're visiting with its president, Bob Gray. Good morning, Bob. Hey, Greg. Hope I got that right, that you are the president. I am, and thank you for getting me up this early in the Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. <laughs> We've had your brother here with us before next door in the uh, the nice foundation and the conference room over there. And so now seeing uh, Dan's brother, Bob, in here in a reading room. It's fantastic getting you in. <laughs> thank you. It's my honor to be here. Uh, even more of an honor for us, particularly to oh, think of sitting with the president of seeing 55,000 members within the South Atlantic Shrine Association and know that you've been this active for as long as you have in this tremendous organization. It's a real honor to get you in. Well, my honor to be here. Thank you. I can't you. remember who it was who was with us, a, a guy who put together, it was the 25th or 24th annual Merle's Inlet Boat Parade, who started talking about Shrine and uh, gentleman uh, who was with us recently promoting the July 4th boat parade. Uh, had to be Bob Hendrick. It was Bob Hendrick, and, absolutely. And Bob is one of a, uh, he's a jewel of a Shriner. He, he is. really is. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the our national convention is always around the 4th of July. Right. And that prevents me from attending or being at the Merle's Inlet boat parade. Uh, but Bob's been very active in that. He's also very active with the uh, local Shrine organization and and he's actor with the South Atlantic. He's going to be uh, the parade co-chairman this year. He's been parade co co chairman and co-chairman many years. I think ever since the first we had the first parade in Myrtle Beach, and uh, uh, Bob also has been uh, very active with the uh, other groups of Shriners in the area of Omar. He's an Omar Shriner. I'm an Omar Shriner. Omar is the uh, uh, chapter that has a. The uh, 21 counties of the Low Country of South Carolina. Okay. We go from the North Carolina border to the Georgia border, mm. about a county west of I-95. We have about 4,000 members in Omar. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And Omar is one of the 19. Is it chapters or units of the? Uh, well, South we used Atlanta? to call them temples. People Temple. got a, 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 a interpreted that falsely as some type of religious organization, and believe me, Shriners are not. <laughs> we are religious. One of our tenets of, uh, is that we are Masons, and Masons all have to have a belief in a supreme being. Mm -hmm. To be a Mason, you have to do that, uh, but your own beliefs are your own past that point. So we all have a belief in a supreme being, right. but we're not uh, anyway, in any way, shape, or form a religious organization. Uh, but in the late, last, latter part of the last century, the 1800s, the word temple had a different kind of connotation. It was mm -hmm. a, a temple of learning was a school, a temple of law was a courthouse. The shrine adopted the word temple. Unfortunately, people misconstrued that. Right. And uh, over the last few years, we've been trying to use a, the word chapter or the word shrine center. Shrine so we center. have 19 member shrine centers in six states. Mm, that's tremendous. And, of course, Omar, again, being about 4,000 members uh, or shrine, shriners Sons, in the, uh, okay, so uh, 4,000 members within Omar. Um, and then, of course, 19 uh, shrine centers within the South Atlantic uh, Shrine Association, which you serve as president. You know, when talking to Bob Hendrick, I, of course, bought a, brought a Bob Cape. And then I thought it was just Bob Squared, and then he said, well, it's really Bob Cubed. You know, there's Bob Gray around here. So there's three tremendous Bobs, te terribly dedicated. I'm sure a lot of other Bobs within the Omar, and then a heck of a lot of Bobs uh, and many others within the South Atlantic Shrine. So well, Bob is a member of our local clowns organization, and he's a unique individual, too. He's yes. A, he's a fun guy to be around. You know, I mentioned to uh, Bob Hendrick there on the set about the red hat, and he uh, looked at me with a, a, even a slight bit of derision there when I called it a red cap. And <laughs> share with viewers real quick who may not be seeing this for the first time, but have always wondered, 
what is there on your uh, on your head? Well, it's a it's a sign of a Shriner, and we do that so that people know who we are. Right. And uh, we hope that they'll uh, want to join us and be part of our organization. Um, my children call it a flower pot. <laughs> and said, Daddy's got his flower pot on. <laughs> but the, uh, the shrine goes back to 1870. Mm. There was a group of 13 men in a, a men's club in New York City who wanted to form a club. Uh, in the late 1800s, it was you know, a lot of fraternal organizations were getting started. Right. Um, and the shrine was one of them. And one common bond that these guys happened to have is they were all Masons. So that was one of the tenets that they uh, adopted, that all Shriners are Masons. Not all Masons are Shriners, uh -huh. but all Shriners are Masons. Um, and one of these guys happened to be an actor. Another was a doctor. The actor went to Europe on a tour, acting tour, which was very common back then. You had to do your... European tour mm -hmm. and while he was in Europe he went to a party and this party he attended had a, a Mediterranean oriental theme Egyptian type theme mm -hmm. and he it must have been a, must have been a good party <laughs> <laughs> he brought the part uh, the idea back and he and his doctor friend wrote up this the the shrine right. and uh, it's all a party it's you know people who put some type of uh, uh, ritual into the shrine missed the point. It's a party. We are all belong to a fraternity. <laughs> we are out having, to good, having a good time. Yes. Now, the shrine existed for the first 50 years of existence without a true purpose. And then a fellow named Adair at the uh, uh, annual shrine convention in Atlanta, Georgia in 1920 um, all the shrine centers in existence had different charitable or philanthropic, philanthropic uh, things that they were doing, but there right. was no central um, reason. And uh, he gave a very stirring speech about uh, uh, children in need. Mm -hmm. And it was at that convention in 1920 that the uh, shrine said, "Children's hospitals are going to be our reason for being." I love and our, our first. Children's Hospital was built in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1922, mm. and now we have 22 children's hospitals throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And it's not a charity. It's a philanthropic or philanthropy. Uh, it's not charity because the ability to pay is not a factor. Mm -hmm. It's all free. We don't, um, no one has ever been charged for services at a shrine hospital. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether it's the child of a billionaire or a, uh, someone who is uh, living on the streets. That's immaterial. Mm. Uh, we're there to help the child, and uh, we've been doing it very effectively since 1922. And as our abilities have um, increased to... Yes. Uh, take care of different th uh, different. It was originally it was mainly orthopedic problems. Right. Uh, burns were adopted in the 1960s, and uh, more recently um, uh, spinal problems have mm -hmm. come to fore. So uh, the shrine is growing. Originally the age limit was 14. Now it's 18. Uh, but even that is not a um, barrier. Uh, if the child is undergoing treatment at the age of 18, uh, they don't just stop. Mm -hmm. I've met uh, patients as old as 22. Is that right? The well, trying continue to support? Well, they, they sometimes the treatment has to go through a series sure. of operations, mm -hmm. and things can't be speeded up. So they continue that until the goal is reached mm -hmm. at whatever age limit. What a tremendous commitment. So a child normally, if they, are, if they are coming into one of your 22 hospitals, would probably be under the age of 18, but are coming in for any, but if they've got treatment, they can potentially go on as long as that treatment is needed. That's true. Very important. Very important. If a viewer needs to get off to work now, Bob, or get out of the house, what's a good phone number for someone to learn? Obviously, we want to talk a little bit about the Beach Boogie and Barbecue Festival that will happen in the end of this month, but even more exciting, a lot of the activities that will be happen, uh, happening during the 34th annual 
festival and convention that will be held here for the South Atlantic Shrine. Very exciting. What's a good phone number that someone could call? Well, call me, 843-450-2741. Okay, 843-450-2741. Not too many guests to give out their own number. And, of course, more excitingly, they can go online to SASA2007 or SASA2007.com to see the lineup, to see all the, all the locations. You've got a lot of hotels putting on, uh, I mean, ex obviously accepting these. It looks like almost 10,000 folks, potentially even more, coming in from the six states, the uh, 55,000 uh, uh, Shriners within the six states that are part of the South Atlantic Shrine Association. That's a big deal and a big impact on the Myrtle Beach area. Well, we, we love Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach has been very kind to the Shrine for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, first uh, meeting, our annual com uh, uh, meeting, was here in Myrtle Beach in 1974. Mm. Uh, my father happened to be uh, honored that year by being elected the first elected president of the South Atlantic Shrine Association. Your so father I, I was. I take pride in that. Wow. Uh, he was potentate of Omar in 66, and I'm kind of following in his footsteps. And uh, well, since we're here at Ori Georgetown Technical College, I'll yep. say that he was also the first chairman of the board of Ori Georgetown Technical That's College. That's exactly so right. I, I, I follow in some deep footprints. You do, and even your brother, of course, not only uh, the, the role just at Ori Georgetown Tech, he serves as the first congressional district's representative on the state board of technical colleges. So you all have gotten, as a family, clearly very interested in the technical college system. And it's, uh, that's even more exciting to have you here as we walked into the library. And they were, again, kind enough to open up. This is such a beautiful location. It's open from 745 to 845 here, Monday through Thursday, and change the hours a little bit on the weekends. But a great opportunity, a beautiful campus out here. It is. A lot going on. And speaking of the air base, Beach Boogie and Barbecue Festival be happening the 31st of this month. And, of course, the uh, September 1, a lot happening. And Shrine is very involved with the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce for that festival. It is, and we're uh, we're tickled about that. That's a it's a fundraiser for our local Shriners, Omar, uh, and uh, and something to to uh, uh, be a part of the city of Myrtle Beach to help the chamber out. So it's a uh, I shake hands, your shake hands type thing. Uh, the uh, Omar Shriners have had a a, 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 a spring barbecue cook off at Family Kingdom Amusement Park. Uh, with the Sea Mist Resort for right. the last three or four years. Really? And uh, uh, last year, the Chamber, in an effort to uh, generate more business in, uh, around Labor Day, uh, in, in conjunction with the Shrine, uh, helped to form Beach Be Boogie and Barbecue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking for a tremendous turnout this year. I wasn't able to be here last year. My mother's birthday was on September the 2nd, and I, yes. I needed to be there. And, and uh, unfortunately, the, uh, I couldn't be here. Uh, but I'm looking forward to be here, that being here this year to help out. Um, uh, that's Friday and Saturday, right? Uh, of the uh, Labor Day weekend. Yes, yes. And uh, the uh, local Shriners here will be out in force. You'll see a lot of funny hats. Yes, as Bob and, uh, said, the uniform. That is the uniform. <laughs> Even though your kids call it the uh, flower, flower pot. pot, Bob Hendricks said that is our uniform. Well, the Fez is part of that Mediterranean theme. The uh, the city of Morocco and in Fez or Fez, Morocco, uh, is where the uh, hat originally uh, came up, and it's nothing more than a hat. Right. And, uh, uh, we just wear it to be identified as Shriners. Absolutely, which is a great point. Are there other organizations that have, I'm trying to think if there are other organizations, of course you highlighted that uh, you have to be a Mason to be a Shrine, you don't have to be a Shrine to be a Mason. Uh, you but, have to be a Shriner to be a, you have to be a Mason to be a Shriner. Right. But you don't need to be a, uh, as a Mason you don't have to join the Shrine. Right, right, right.